I'm David Demartini, and I'm the vice president and executive res producer responsible for the Godfather franchise. And I'm Mike Olson, I'm the creative director on the Godfather franchise. The Caneos are arguably one of the toughest families in the game. They, uh, they have venues evenly spread throughout the entire map, and they often just seem to always have guys, more guys protecting venues out, out front than, uh, than, than most of the other families. I mean, even their first venue in Little Italy, which is, which is where you start to build, uh, uh, build your character up, um, when you run across that Cuneo venue, you're, you're definitely, uh, you definitely feel the pressure from them. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. They're the second hardest family in the game, the Barzinis being the hardest family in the game. And uh, they're armed with a lot of serious weapons. So some of the other guys are armed with pistols and, and different kind of pistol weapons. The Cuneos always <laughs> seem to be carrying shotguns and Tommy, Tommy guns, guns, you know? Yeah. And you very quickly get to know the very distinctive sound of a Cuneo wielding a shotgun because as soon as you hear that blast, you see half your health go off the screen and you run for cover. So, I mean, you're, you're looking out for them at every turn. You know, they all are part of what makes up the living world. And, and I think part of what makes the living world interesting in The Godfather is it's your, one of your goals is to take over the entire living world for the Corleone family. Um, you know, as you move through, there's not only the venue gameplay that goes on in the living world, there's over 20 different hits that take place in the living world. So there's four different hit givers, and each of those hit givers gives you four or five hits to conduct in different territories across the map. So not only do the venue scale and the family scale, but the hit scale, again, based on the, the hit target that you're trying to take out and what family they're from. Absolutely, and they also try to teach you the more advanced hand-to-hand, -hand, black hand mechanics. Um, you can obviously always go up to these guys and, and just shoot them from a mile away, but they also, the Corleones also give you a manner, a, a directed manner to take these guys out. So, you know, certain guys, you've got to make it look like an accident. So you've got to throw a guy into traffic or throw him off, off a, into a rail yard. If you just simply put a bullet in his head, you leave that evidence of the bullet being behind, and you don't get the bonus method of, of taking him out as the Corleones had authored. That's a good segue into execution styles. So there's, a, there's over 20 execution styles that you can earn as well, uh, ranging from, you know, kneecapping a guy to the overcooked execution style, which is throwing a guy into the, into the oven. We give you a little bit of help in the living world, too. If there's someone that's critical for you to talk to, we put the Godfather puppeteering symbol over their head. When you see that, I'd strongly advise that you go talk to that person because there's an important piece of information that they have that they're willing to share with you. So you'll see those people kind of spread around the world from time to time in the missions, you'll see them as well. The Godfather puppeteering symbol over their head definitely is an indication that somebody's got something they want to talk to you about. But sometimes you have to beat it out of them. You know, and then in the living world, the living world is a living world, so there's a lot of just stuff that happens in the living world that you might happen upon. You might happen upon a transaction, and you could actually walk in on that transaction, interrupt the transaction, and walk away with a lot of cash. So two families might be de doing a deal underneath the table. If you happen upon that, a lot of stuff's going on in the world, you're able to walk away with a lot of cash. A lot of stuff goes down in the parks. Yeah, I mean, the Corleones will assist you. Um, certain, sometimes they'll stop racket trucks on their own, and so you'll hear a whistle from one of them calling you over to assist them in, in getting a shipment that might have just come in off of, a, off of a truck or off of a train, as an example. The other thing is you, you want to make sure you're keeping um, police chiefs and, and officers on the take. Um, keeping the police on your side will actually force them to work with you. So you'll generate less heat while this is going on. So when you bribe a cop, you'll, uh, you'll reduce the amount of heat that you currently have accrued. Um, you'll get a bribe timer that'll surface on screen. And while that bribe timer is, is active, the cops will actually work with you. So they'll turn their back to petty crime. And if you happen to get into a shootout with another family, the cops will actually fire at the other family and allow you to go scot-free. We tend to move from kind of an action-based game in the beginning where you're using the black hand mechanic and doing a lot of fighting into more of a discovery game, into kind of a, into an RPG game where you're investing your respect points into upgrading your skills. And then finally we wrap the whole thing up into a strategy game where you're strategically taking over every one of these neighborhoods until you're top down. So our Godfather living worlds make it up of you and your family. You're cutting your own path through the Godfather world. There's four other families that you're working against, the Tataglias, the Strachis, the Caneos, and the Barzinis. They all ramp in difficulty, so you want to stick with the easier families first and then upgrade your weapons, invest in your character to be able to take on the, the ones when you get much higher ranked in the family.